कैन यू टेल मी व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन डॉकर इमेज एंड अ कंटेनर सो आई थिंक कंटेनर इज द मेन यू नो ऑब्जेक्ट व्हिच इज गोइंग टू होल्ड दैट दैट गिव्स द एनवायरमेंट एंड इमेज इज लाइक व्हाटएवर वी हैव क्रिएटेड द प्रोजेक्ट इमेज यू नो द वॉर और द यू नो एसोसिएटेड फाइल्स व्हिच वी आर क्रिएटिंग सो दैट एंटायर पैकेज इज कॉल्ड एज इमेज व्हिच हैज टू बी मूव्ड टू द डिफरेंट कंटेनर सो वी हैव डेव कंटेनर स्टेज कंटेनर एंड प्रोडक्शन सो वी क्रिएट अ स्नैपशॉट ऑफ इट एंटायर इमेज एंड देन वी मूव इट टू दीस कंटेनर्स सो व्हाट इज अ कंट्रोलर एंड मॉडल इन एंगुलर basically it it is having the same respect to has been uh, as we talk in java so i'm more a java developer so i'll explain in that context so whenever we have a ts file uh, ts file would be uh, it's like a controller file would say and uh, which would be calling an a model file model file is like where we have a bin structure uh, like in angular when we are uh, setting up a constructor uh, so in a ts file at initial level when we want to call any we want to use any service or something we can pass that model classes and we can well using the service we wanted to flow some data with the help of models then we can use that model classes to just uh, transferring the data between the two services what is the difference between vector and array list vector and array list i think there is a difference about it vector is the synchronized one and array list is not synchronized when do you use array list over vector and when do you use vector over array list suppose there is a case we have the multiple resource and they are trying to uh, mainly first i want to say vector i think we are used uh, very rarely but when we are we are going to use so that reason i'm telling when there are multiple resources and they are trying to fetch that same array list and if we have the I mean, uh, that time it will give the exception right means concurrent modification type of exception or so for thread say we can use the vector and vector uh, it is vector as a thread sub that is why it is a, a slower than the array list and uh, yeah so uh, suppose we we want g- good performance and there is no thread sub requirement so that uh, that time we can use array list but uh, we need thread sub and we don't care about the performance that time we can go for the vector and any other collection you have used like in the set hash tree set anything uh, collections i have uh, uh, worked with array list and a set hash map uh these three i have worked uh, in the collections level you may have heard that uh, we override equals and hash code method together so can you tell me what yeah. is the contract between them why we override them together and what will happen if we override only hash code and don't override equals and vice versa if two objects are equal by equals method then the hash code hash code of both objects uh, are uh, always same but uh, if the hash code of two objects is equals yeah but we can we cannot guarantee that the both objects are equal so and the another one thing is that we override both the methods because the object class uh, object class equals method do a reference comparison so it, it, uh, it use double equals mm-hmm. uh, for object comparison so in that when we we override the equals method that time we give our own equals uh, logic in that method so on that basis if our objects are equal so so the hash code hash code for the both uh, both object will be same and uh, no and no duplicate object will be get created when, uh, when it will be stored means yeah and, and something uh, yeah and yeah, that's that's what i will remember there is something another that i'm not correct currently recollecting that remembering that in hash code okay so what do you think why string class is immutable in java so string is immutable because um, see we we need uh, most of the time like in in banking like if you say account information or anything it's uh, which which we, we need not to change basically we, we need not to append that that object right so for that like it should be uh, it like we have to uh, create uh, we we need that kind of you know object where it should not get append so that's why string is immutable for security purpose for making it secure from the object user and uh, it will handle that uh, okay. because of that string is immutable can you tell me how you can avoid the deadlock situation in your code deadlock mostly in a multi threaded environment i mean so one way is like uh, using the new executor framework i guess uh, we can define for what time period we can uh, you know allow a threat to access an object lock lock the object if that time frame is given let's say 5 seconds or 5 second only an object can uh, hold a lock to it and after that he will have to release it then i think it will break that deadlock condition have you got a chance to use any tools related to check their deadlock occurring in your code or not i have never uh, implemented any set kind of tell me what are the best practices you follow while coding 
best practices uh, probably like you'll have to follow some coding principles actually while you code so like the solid principles you should not be like uh, mixing up a lot of stuff while you are coding you should not be like, putting a lot of dependency of one or other like it should be like uh, loosely coupled it should not be like very hardly coupled so like if you are like going to change something it is like breaking everything i should have like a good test coverage around everything that you are writing uh, your code that you are writing it should be like uh, based on the interfaces you should be coding based on your interfaces that you are coding and probably like i should be having like smaller methods actually should not be putting everything in single methods like uh, single like method should have their own responsibilities so create in a way so that uh, can be easily testable so that even you can follow the test driven development approach to make them like quite easily maintainable and like should look good actually probably yeah, like single responsibility like again the open close principles that you follow like i should not feel like doing some maintenance or doing some enhancements over your current project you should code it in a way in the first time that if you are like getting any more things into similar project you should not be breaking the existing stuff that you already have coded uh, what will happen if we put a key object in a hash map which is already there if you are passing in the hash map as a, any object as a key so you made to be with the mutability concept so yeah. you have to override the hash map and the equals method so if you only hash map it will not uh, like in hash code and equals method sorry hash code and equals method so you you cannot compare the object address you have to compare the content inside the object for that in the equals method you have to compare and be sure if having the same employee and uh, the hash code should be different so you have to implement different hash code logic there to do any prime number or anything so hash code equals method you have to implement so in spring what are the different features you have used have you used aop uh, yes uh, i have used uh, as per oriented programming yeah so mainly i have used it for the point cut notations for that particular thing okay. so for the uh, i have defined the some of the point cuts uh, uh, to trigger the particular uh, methods uh, yeah. as per the requirement so at the rate before at the rate after uh, those things are uh, those point notations why you have used it in your uh, project what is the purpose it is sol- uh, solving it's coming to that uh, one example like a login example yeah. so before the logging i want to do some operations so that i i can define some uh, at the rate before yeah. so and i can define that particular thing as uh, exact uh, for that you are matching i will do so that what will happen like before the logging itself so it will do some operations so after and uh, after doing the sign out so um, some things i want to do as a part of that particular thing so i will use it for at the rate after so those purposes uh, it will it got defined for that particular thing yes. so not only for that particular thing it will be useful for the logging purpose so when you are you are doing something so before the log before the action we can define something and uh, some uh, whatever like uh, those are uh, those advices we can use it uh, wherever we want okay correct correct so apart from logging there are multiple thing, uh, things it can be used can you tell me how hash map internally works so in java 8 or java 7 java 8 uh, hash map actually first of all it is using array list for storing array as indexing and uh, for storing double link list they are using so first of all whenever you are creating any put method it will first of all it doing the hashing part hashing part is nothing but finding the uh, creating the hash address for that uh, key uh, so they are using the hash code method of the object class after the finding the uh, creating that indexes and go to the that are indexes and storing the element in the double link list and where you are having the like a first four nodes is there like a first the address and uh, second is the keys third is the value and fourth one is the next node addresses so basically they are storing if you are uh, doing like a same key you are putting then again has collision can be happen and uh, through the equals method they can be find out which uh, which indexes should be if it is the same indexes and has collision happen then if the value is same then it will override if it is the value is different that to the next node and in concept to java it if the has collision is happen regularly so there is a tree five threshold limit of eight so whenever it is come to the eight times the collision is happening then your double link list is converted to the tree set the binary tree and uh, in between that if you are deleting some of the element if it is like in the threshold limit comes to six then it will convert to the again binary to the that link list it's depends upon the collision part what about j units have you done writing the test cases for your code currently i'm using jmockit and previously i used powermock and mockito okay so why these frameworks are introduced for different purpose these different frameworks are there like by powermock you can and powermock and jmockit both actually when you see a, a, a useful to mock a static method uh, in mockito it is actually difficult to mock a static method uh, this particular difference i know about uh, this singleton in this singleton class suppose there are uh, multiple uh, we are working in a multi threaded uh, environment so mm-hmm. uh, one thread is calling your uh, get instance method okay 
and uh, the second thread at the same time is calling the inside that get instance method you will have uh, you you must be creating a new object okay and before uh, creating object you are checking that if the uh, instance is null or not okay so suppose uh, there are multiple threads so how you can avoid, like how you can Concrete. get a sing singleton mm. Mm. can object you put it synchronized time? Uh, because in my case, one case which I faced is I was writing I, in multi-threaded environment. I used to execute a framework. So there what happened is a lot of threads are working. I created 30 threads. And in that case, all the threads were writing at the same time into the file. So some of the data got missed out every time. So I was supposed to get 7 lakhs of data, but out of which I was getting only 6 lakhs yeah. because of this part. So what I did, I put it as whenever on the method label, what I did, I put it as synchronized. So whenever a thread is calling, so that will call this method and that will be synchronized. So one thread, if it is working, then the second thread will not, will wait and until unless its process is not completed, this thread will not write it to the CSP. So where exactly you will put the synchronized? Uh, it is on the method level. On the method level, you mean create that method as synchronized method? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that will put, uh, put lock on the entire uh, method. Do you think it is mm -hmm. a good way to do that? Okay, so we can go on a granular level also. Inside the method, I can put a synchronized one. Yeah. Yeah, so inside that mm -hmm. method, while uh, create, create the object. Yeah, we can put the synchronized one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And there also, I mean, there you will do the double check locking uh, what are the different types of exceptions are there um, basically two types of exception checked and unchecked exceptions are there checked exceptions are those uh, which are uh, throwable at the compile time itself so uh, so that uh, we can uh, clear it easily and uh, unchecked exceptions are those arithmetic uh, logic and null pointer exceptions that will come at runtime only we can handle unchecked exceptions by using uh, exception handling mechanism like uh, throws and uh, through keyword, uh, uh, we can use our man-made uh, man exceptions uh, to the user. Means, uh, for example, uh, compile time exception is illegal argument, file not found. Uh, I mean, uh, if you are referring to a Java class which is not available, then uh, a compile time uh, checked exception will come. Unchecked is uh, null pointer exception, array, ind array index out of bounds exception, and um, uh, arithmetic and logic expressions will come at the runtime. So those we can handle in our own exception handling mechanism. When we say that that uh, the streams we are not storing element we just iterate them or perform some operations on them so what is the meaning of not storing element in stream is stream it in like the memory basically st uh, st so yeah it's in the memory but then what happens is like uh, when you are, you are doing some operation on a stream it does not modify the original exactly it simply produces you some other output any result actually and then like you have create some another stream some another collections actually to collect it out you are not modifying the original source unlike like collections where you have like a uh, limited size actually and then you iterate over them 